Honourable members, there has been a lot of speculation on the proposal to relocate Lucera prisons. As a house of record, it is imperative that we rise above such speculation and listen for an official government position so that we don't just speculate, we just don't read from papers. We need to get a clear position from government on what is happening. And the minister is going to present this pursuant to Rule 52.1 of the Rules of Procedure, and he will give us information as to whether the speculation is a reality. Honorable Minister, and hopefully this statement will put to rest that anxiety. Um, right honourable speaker and members, at the 14th sitting of the third meeting of the third session of the 11th parliament, held on Wednesday 28th, February 2024, the Honourable Mbwateka Mwagafa, member of parliament of Igara West, Busheni district, raised a matter regarding a letter reportedly from the Minister of Internal Affairs that appeared in social media calling for a consultative meeting on the relocation of Luzira prison to create space for an investment opportunity to an external investor. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, I want to respond as follows. But we will speak and members, uh, Luzira prison group of prisons is the first prison set up in Uganda by the colonial government in the 1920s. By then, the population of Uganda was very low, estimated at 3,071,608 persons. This is according to the colonial annual report number 1112 of December 1920. At that time, Luzira area was very urban with almost no developed infrastructure. The prison's infrastructure was the most developed and the prison suited to be in that location. The principal consideration at the time was security as Luzira could only be accessed from one point. Right Honorable Speaker and members, over time, the prison's infrastructure became dilapidated while the neighborhood continued to improve and modernize. A modern secondary school and hospital, Bishop Cyprian Chanjire, was set up on 20 acres of the prison land, another 64 acres that, that, that was used by the prisons for crop and livestock farming, became an industrial park with industries such as Quality Chemicals Limited, Police Sack Limited, Ufresh, Nightfly, and Masterwood, among others. High-rise private property have also sprung up in the immediate neighborhood of the prison. Types of prisons in Luzira. Right from our speaker and members, prisons are classified according to the purpose they serve, either as reception centers, receive and hold suspects awaiting trial, or rehabilitation centers, those that receive convicts from the reception centers for rehabilitation and reform. Prisons are also categorized by the type of offenders they hold and the level of security required. Maximum security, high security, medium and low security, and open prisons. Luzira group of prisons was established to absorb all these categories of prisons as indicated in the table that follows. We have Uganda prisons upper. It's in the category of maximum security prison and it's both reception and it's both a reception and rehabilitation center. Two, Uganda prison Markison Bay, it's high security prison, both reception and rehabilitation center. Three, Kampala Remand prison, low security prison, used as a reception center. And four, Luzira Women prison, a maximum security prison for female prisoners, used both as a reception and rehabilitation same. General, I hope you're not going away. Okay, thank you. Other facilities at Luzira, we have a prisons academy and training school, Markison Bay Farm, Markison Bay Hospital, regional headquarters, 
Murchison Bay Primary School, staff housing, staff hospital and clinic, two churches and one mosque, parade grounds, and a football pitch. Current prisoners and staff population at Luzira, prisons, uh, prisoners population, honorable speaker and honorable members, as at 25th March, this report has uh, been there since that time. Luzira prisons had a total of 8,790 prisoners, uh, including 5,167 remands, 3,457 convicts, 107 condemned prisoners, and 59 civil debtors, as indicated in the table below. APA had 105 condemns, 1,368 convicts, 1,746 remands, and the total 3,219. Markison Bay had, three, had 1,398 convicts, 1,617 remands, 7 debtors, 3,022 uh, total. Kampala, uh, R had 318 convicts, 1,490 remands, 40 debtors, 1,848 total. And Luzira women had two condemns, 347 convicts, 314 remands, 12 debtors, total 701. The totals are down in the last column. Staff population, as at 2024, uh, was 2653 in Luzira Barracks. The current state of the infrastructure at Luzira. Congestion. Luzira group of prisons was built in the 20s with a total of a total prisoners holding capacity of 1,923 prisoners. Today, Luzira is holding 8,790 prisoners, uh, thereby having an excess of 6,000 867 prisoners above its capacity, up to four times beyond the designed capacity. The details are shown in the table that follows. The disparity between the holding capacity, 646, population there, 3,022, excess 2,376, a number of uh, times above capacity 4.7. Kampala remand 289, holding capacity, population 1848, excess 1559, uh, capacity above, holding capacity 6.4. Luzira women 232, holding capacity, population now 701, excess 469, the exceeding capacity is 3.4. The totals are down. Uh, the safety and security of prisons, besides limited capacity, the design of the prisons at Luzira did not at the time envisage the level of security required to keep the categories of inmates that we hold now in Luzira. The buildings have not been renovated in recent times, and the state of dilapidation is extremely high. The buildings have outlived their lifetime. Reasons for the proposed relocation. Ratubo speaker and members, the land of is approximately 260 acres. Strategically located in Luzira, Nakawa Division, Kampala Capital City Authority. And a, a prime urban area along the shore of Lake Victoria with excellent scenery. It sits next to the railroad line connecting Kampala to Lake Victoria, which is Kampala's only inland harbor at Port Bell. The principal consideration at the time was security, as Luzira could only be accessed from one point. However, currently, with the mentioned developments and constraints of space impl and implied high security risks, this can no longer justify its continued existence in the present location. Prisoners can be kept anywhere in Uganda, provided they have access to the courts of law, hospitals, and prisons visits by relatives. The transport network in and around Kampala metropolitan area has improved and co customized security vehicles can easily be acquired to secure prisoners in transit to access justice and other services. Cheaper land, if available, can be identified. Modern infrastructure will then be constructed to accommodate most of the major activities currently being handled at Luzira. This will not only solve the congestion problem, 
but would also offer better human conditions, rehabilitation, and friendly facilities. Even more suitable and conducive, cost-effective alternative were to be acquired, Luzira Prison's land, which is very prime, would be released and secured for investment. Modern investment on the current prison land would lead to job creation for Ugandans, foreign exchange earnings, increased tax base, and would foster economic growth and development. This in line with the country's policy framework of a poverty reduction strategy that emphasizes investment promotion. Uganda prison services is likely to benefit from such development other than continuously holding on to this constraint space with all the attendant constraints mentioned. The current prison's infrastructure is highly dilapidated and its continued use is insecure and the denial of the rights of prisoners to a decent living environment. Secondly, the design of the infrastructure can no longer handle the current type of prisoners that we hold. And thirdly, the design of infrastructure is not rehabilitation friendly and therefore can no longer support correction and modern penal policy. It is, therefore, it appeals to logic to plan for new infrastructure in a more suitable place and relieve Luzira for other viable economic investments. Even without the current proposal, just a moment, members. Even without the current proposal by an investor to put up a hotel at Luzira in exchange for constructing a prison elsewhere, which sparked this debate, it would inevitably be necessary to plan for a suitable alternative to Luzira prisons. The question of what to do in Luzira land is a detail, provided due diligence is complied with. Towards this end, therefore, there are many options for consideration, including these ones below, and I would like to implore members to listen. The options are the following. There are three mentioned here. One, no relocation. Renovate and expand the current Luzira facilities at a cost at a cost of approximately 400 billion to meet the, requ to meet the requirements of a modern correctional institution and security needs of the changing profiles of offenders without relocation. B, relocate the prison at government cost but retain the land and facilities at Luzira for the other prison non-custodial purposes. C, relocate Luzira group of prisons to another site to present an opportunity of acquiring better infrastructure that, are, that can enable the service to effectively carry out custody, rehabilitation, and reform of offenders. At the investor's own cost, estimated at 934 billion. In conclusion, right honorable speaker and members, Luzira prison land is very prime, can be released and secured for investment, or for the other options indicated above. Modern investment on the current prison land would lead to job creation for Ugandan foreign exchange earnings, increased tax base, and would foster economic growth. Uganda's prison service will benefit from such development. Alternatively, retention and improvement of Luzira prisons in its current location or retention of the land for non-custodial purposes accompanied with relocation of the prison at government cost are also options, albeit with heavy cost implications. To improve the welfare of staff and prisons, a more spacious space be identified to construct modern prison infrastructure that supports security, safety, and rehabilitation of offenders and well-being of staff. In conclusion, uh, right honorable speaker and members, it is prudent for government to plan for the new and better infrastructure for the prison service in a more secure location and relieve Luzira Rand for either of the options mentioned above. Thank you for listening. Uh, that is the statement for Thank you. about the subject. Decision already been taken or you're seeking for, for, for? Because there are some scenarios. All these are at inception. There's no decision which has been There's taken. no decision. And I want to allay the, the fears of members. Okay. Thank the minister for the report. Right speaker, I am surprised. 
that government is planning to expand prison facilities. I'm very surprised. That part of relocation is intended to create enough space for prisoners. At a time when a country is actually supposed to be planning for stability, law and order to minimize prisoners. On the contrary, we are planning for expansion. Right on speaker, the minister has said, the minister has said, we plan a visit. Minister, I have been to Luzira. As a political prisoner, I was in Luzira. There is a reason why that place is located in that area. Those of you who have not been to prison, and I pray that you find time and be there, but for the good reasons, like I was there, you will understand that, Red Rose Speaker, even location of prison is psychological and it also impacts on prisoners. You know what happens in Nakasongola, you know what happens if you are taken in all these facilities that we are not supposed or created to provide sufficient prison facilities. Actually, right on speaker, those of us who have been to prison, we prefer being in Luzira than elsewhere, even geographically. But right on speaker, our fundamental point is the company that is being reported to construct this uh, facility. That company has been blacklisted by the World Bank. Is debt burdened? That company, RVR, is debt burdened, has been blacklisted. And it is the company being fronted to take over that piece of land. How do we, how do we, and it has been even a subject of investigation, even locally here, and it is a company being fronted. Right on speaker and honorable colleagues, we should not allow land grabbing disguised as an opportunity to expand Luzira. We should not allow that. We should not allow that. If you want to have more, 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 more hotels, please, where you want to take this, this facility is where actually you should take the hotel. Because that place also needs development. Take it there Thank you. and you also have that place developed. Thank Otherwise, you. what is happening here is land grabbing disguised Thank in another you. manner. I thank you. Thank you. Honor on it. I want to guide the house. Let's, let's discuss on the three available options. The three available options is no relocation. Two, relocate the prisons at the cost of government. Three, relocate the group of prisons to another site. Unfortunately, at the cost of the investor. Unfortunately, the minister has not told us who the investor is. Two, two, much as my presumption is by the time somebody goes to prison, the person is not going for luxury. Where you're saying that the, the land is small, the land needs to be, we need to expand, we need that kind of thing. So they, it's not about luxury. It's about the land of Uganda, for the people of Uganda, which is in a very strategic location. And who is that investor, is the question. 